and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about a very interesting topic, and that is the rabies virus. So let's get started. So what is rabies? Rabies is a zoonotic disease, which means it's a disease that is transmitted from animals to humans. The disease is caused by the rabies virus, which is usually spread to humans from the saliva of infected animals. Domestic dogs are the most common reservoir of the virus, with more than 99% of human deaths caused by dog-mediated rabies. According to WHO, or the World Health Organization, up to 59,000 people worldwide die from rabies every year. Once in the body, the virus can affect the body in one of two ways. Firstly, it can enter the peripheral nervous system, which is the PNS, directly and migrate to the brain. Or secondly, it can replicate within the muscle tissue where it is safe from the host immune system. And from here, it can enter the nervous system through the neuromuscular junctions. But the main concern with rabies is that once it's inside the nervous system, the virus produces acute inflammation of the brain and a coma and death soon follow. So from this definition of rabies, we get that it's a zoonotic disease, which means that the disease is transmitted from animals to humans. And it's usually spread to humans from either saliva, so either a bite from an animal who carries the rabies virus or even a scratch in some cases. So although the rabies vaccines in dogs are quite well implemented worldwide, we still have up to about 59,000 people worldwide who die from rabies each year. So the problem with the rabies virus is that once it enters the nervous system, it actually causes quite severe inflammation in the brain and causes the patient to go into a coma and then to actually pass away. And this is why it's given the rap for being one of the most deadly diseases around the world and is such a major public health problem worldwide. So now that we know what the basics of rabies are, let's take a closer look at how one actually contracts the disease. So as we mentioned in the slide before, rabies is actually a zoonotic disease. So rabies is caused by the rabies virus that affects the central nervous system, particularly causing inflammation in the brain. So domestic dogs, cats and rabbits, and wild animals such as skunks, raccoons and bats are able to transfer the virus to humans via bites or scratches. And in some rare reported cases, rabies was also shown to be spread when infected saliva gets into an open wound or into the mucous membranes of an individual, such as their mouth or eyes. And this could occur if the infected animal were to lick an open cut on the person's skin. So the majority of these rabies cases are actually caused by either a bite or a scratch from an infected animal. And these are the various animals which are able to transmit the rabies virus. We have bats, fox, raccoons, domesticated cats and dogs, as well as skunks. And in a very few reported cases, the disease was actually also shown to be spread when the infected saliva gets into an open wound or into an individual's mucous membranes, so areas such as the eyes, the nose, or the mouth. And this could actually transmit the disease too, but is much rarer. The signs and symptoms of rabies? So there are actually two types of rabies. The first type is called furious or encephalitic rabies, and this occurs in 80% of human cases. So here, the individual is actually more likely to experience hyperactivity and hydrophobia, which is a fear of water. The other type is called paralytic or dumb rabies, and here paralysis is the dominant symptom. But the initial onset of both types of rabies begins with flu-like symptoms, which include a fever, muscle weakness, headaches, tingling, prickling, or an itching feeling around the bite area, nausea, and tiredness. So once this wild animal comes along and bites the human, the virus enters the tissue from the saliva of the biting animal, and then the virus will begin to replicate in the muscle near the bite site. And then the virus moves up from the peripheral nervous system to the central nervous system. And the virus ascends up the spinal cord of the individual. And the virus will then reach the brain where it causes a fatal encephalitis, which means the inflammation of the brain tissue. 
and then the virus enters the salivary glands and other organs of the victim. So initially, these patients will have their flu-like symptoms, such as fever, headaches, tingling around that bite area, nausea, muscle weakness, fatigue. And then as time passes along, the symptoms will get more severe. So let's explore those more severe symptoms now. So as we mentioned in the slide before, there are two main types of rabies. So the first one is called the furious rabies. So here the infected individuals will be hyperactive and excitable and may display erratic behavior. And other symptoms that they might suffer from include insomnia, anxiety, confusion, agitation, hallucinations, excessive salivation, problem swallowing, and a fear of water. So the furious type of rabies is actually present in 80% of patients. And then we have the paralytic type, which is present in 20% of patients. So in the paralytic rabies, this form of rabies takes longer to set in, but the effects are just as severe. So infected people here slowly become paralyzed and will eventually slip into a coma and die. So moving on, let's explore the diagnosis of rabies. So at the time of the bite, there's usually no way to tell for sure whether an animal is rabied or whether it has passed on an infection. When a person is bitten or exposed to an animal that might be sick, doctors don't wait for a diagnosis. They start to treat right away. So lab tests may show antibodies, but these may not appear until later in the development of the disease. So the virus may be isolated from saliva or through a skin biopsy. However, by the time the diagnosis is confirmed, it may be too late to take action. So there's no specific test that we can use early on in the infection to completely be sure that the individual is actually rabies positive because we aren't actually sure whether the animal was carrying the rabies virus or not. So the treatment is always started as soon as possible based on the assumption that the patient is actually rabies positive. And the lab tests might actually show antibodies, which have developed against the rabies virus, but these usually occur very late in the disease, after the more crucial time has passed, or the virus may actually be isolated from salivary samples from these patients or through skin biopsies, but by this time it's usually too late to begin treatment at this stage, because the disease has progressed quite severely and the patient has a very slim chance of surviving. So therefore, the treatment is actually a race against time, and the sooner it's started, the better our chances are of actually saving the patient's life. And finally, let's explore the treatment of rabies. So once a rabies infection is established, there's no effective treatment. Though a small number of individuals have survived rabies, the disease usually causes death. For that reason, if one suspects that they have been exposed to rabies, they need to get a series of shots to prevent the infection from taking hold as soon as possible. The rabies shots include a fast-acting shot, which is called the rabies immune globulin, and this helps to prevent the virus from infecting the individual. And part of this injection is given near the area where the animal bit the individual, if possible, and as soon as possible after the bite. These patients will also then receive a series of rabies vaccinations, so this is given as a series of four doses on day 0, 3, 7 and 14 to help the individual's body learn to identify and fight the rabies virus. And these vaccinations are usually given as injections in the arm. So the best way to approach the disease is actually to wash immediately for 15 minutes with soap and water and disinfectant. So to actually wash that bite wound out quite thoroughly for at least 15 minutes with a disinfectant solution or soap and water. And then the patient needs to immediately go to the hospital where they will receive that first fast acting shot of the rabies immune globulin. And then they will have to come back on the third day, seventh day and 14th day to receive that series of rabies vaccinations. So that first vaccination will be given on the first day, which is day zero in addition to that fast-acting rabies immune globulin shot. So they'll receive two shots on the first day and then one shot on the third, one shot on the seventh, and one shot on the 14th. And that brings us to the end of this video on rabies. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. 
If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.